Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I don't normally talk about on this channel but I probably will start talking about a lot more and that is my faith. I've talked a little bit about a faith transition that I have been going through in my life. Um, I was raised in a very religious home. I was raised in the Mormon religion and I've made plenty of videos about leaving that church and why I decided to leave and my search for truth and I have found that truth since. I have a feeling that a lot of people who don't know who I am are going to watch this video so if you don't know I'll give a little background. Um, hi my name is Sydney. I am 20 years old. I'm going to be 21 soon. Um, I guess I should talk about stuff that would relate to how I came about my faith. I was born into a Mormon household, a generationally Mormon household on my dad's side and my mom was first generation Mormon and that is what I was taught. I went to church every Sunday with my family. You know I always like kind of believed and I was just like oh yeah this is the truth because that's what my parents tell me and all of that kind of stuff but I felt like I never really had a true one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. I didn't really know exactly what that meant and although I felt like I was always yearning for it and searching for it and trying really really hard for that, I didn't really gained that until I was a little bit older. Um, I had an experience when I was about 17 years old where I had not decided but kind of felt like you know there is no God. There cannot be a God and I finally got an answer from God and I equated that with the Mormon church but as I got older and started to question the Mormon church and my religion that I was raised in I realized that that was not God confirming that but more so just confirming that he is there for me and he is real. I come from a broken family. My parents got divorced when I was about six years old and then my dad remarried when I was about 11 and then my mom recently just remarried grew up around a ton of family cousins all that who are all Mormon um, my mother on the other hand was Mormon not sure where she is on her faith journey or whatever but I know my dad is still very much Mormon and then my siblings are just kind of everywhere in between but today we're just gonna talk about me and my faith and I just feel like having a little bit of background it does help give insight into how people come about um, another big thing is I got married when I was 18 years old and I am now divorced. It's definitely been a crazy couple of years and that has ultimately led me to lean on God and discover my faith so I want to talk a little bit about that today. So where do I even begin? So I guess I'll just start back in what I talked about when I was about 17. I had gotten an answer from God. It was a very simple answer. It was just I'm here, I exist, I'm real, and that was the first time I had ever felt true, true connection to God. Um, after that, I kind of just put that off to the side and just kept going on with my life, following my own will. I, I guess in my head, I just felt like, oh, I'm a good person. I don't need to follow God to a T and I was really upset and done with all of the religion and all the rules that were being set out ahead of me and all the pressure and the judgment from the culture that I was in and so I was just kind of half in half out I didn't really know how I felt I just knew there was a God and everything else was just for other people really so then the older that I got I actually ended up getting married and it was kind of after that I had an experience in the Mormon church that made me question a lot of things but I was doing everything right that I was supposed to be doing and in my eyes I was doing what God wanted for me even though I wasn't asking him if I was or anything like that I was just like yep I'm good with God I'm a good person I don't need to worry about it in 2020 about in the summertime I really started to question things I started to realize that I didn't want to just be in this limbo I truly wanted to know what the truth was and who God really was and so I would kind of just here and there like ask God I guess but you know I, wa I wasn't like doing anything crazy I wasn't really like praying like I kind of was sometimes but not really I wasn't like reading the Bible or anything I just thought oh if I'm like God what's up are you there that he would just come and solve all my problems and now looking back I see a lot of times in my life I thought of God as like a genie that could just grant all of my wishes which now I know isn't true so I continued on just not really caring and I'd actually become um, severely 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 depressed I had lots of really bad thoughts like taking my own life harming myself things like that and I had horrible anxiety I had panic attacks at least like three times a week anytime I had to leave the house I would have a panic attack and then I ultimately decided that I should move out of my hometown 
So I moved to Utah with my then husband and it was after I moved that I realized, you know what? I think that this religion that I have been taught isn't the truth. So that's like a whole nother story. I have a YouTube video about that, but I discovered that it wasn't true. And then God came into my life like, like as soon as I was like, okay, I'm really ready to know the truth. I'm done trying to follow all these religion rules and you know, being religious is a idol in itself because you're idolizing the rules and self-serving and selfish, you know, trying to do things to get into heaven, to glorify yourself in the eyes of God, whatever you want to call it. That's what being religious is, at least what I saw it as. And so once I finally let go of that, I feel like God really took the reins of my life. And I basically was like, you know, trying to ask God to align my will with his. And that's when my life completely fell apart. <laughs> Me and my husband ended up deciding to separate. I would say that this was the main cause of it but I now looking back see that I was asking God to do what he wanted what his will was and I truly think that the way if, if God wanted me and my ex to be together then we would be and I think that I may have not been able to progress to where I am today if I was still in that relationship so anyway it was about the beginning of summer 2021 and I was living by myself and I could feel like that depression kind of coming on again and I was like you know what I need to do something about this actually it was around Easter time and my my oldest stepsister was like, I think I had asked her maybe or something like, hey, I know you told me about like a non-denominational Christian church here in Utah. Um, do you want to go with me for Easter? And she was like, yeah, sure, that'd be fun. Uh, we both just went and, you know, it was packed. It was Easter Sunday. And I was shocked. That was the first time in my adult life that I had ever walked into a church that wasn't a Mormon church. And everything the pastor said literally felt like it was for me, meant for me. God was just straight up talking to me through him. Like, I don't know, it was crazy. And I'd never experienced anything like that in my life. And then all the music was just so, like um, in the Mormon church, they don't have like worship bands or anything like that. And so it was just an insane experience in itself. So then after that, I went to a park and I was just listening to some worship music that a friend had sent me and I was just sitting there like praying and just like what do I do like God I want to know you I want to know the truth I am like I'm yearning so bad for this feeling that I'm getting right now and I was like bawling like this was probably the first time that I had really really felt the power of like the Holy Spirit come on to me and it was one of the craziest days of my life super emotional and it was insane honestly like I don't even know how else to describe it so then I kind of went on with my life and I had kind of tried, I feel like I was kind of dipping my toes in at that point and you know like hey like I'm ready to give my life to you. I don't know what my next step is but you know I'm here, I'm ready, I, I know my life is a mess, I cannot do this by myself anymore like please help me. <laughs> And I started to unlearn things that I had learned in my past religious life and relearn what God really was telling me and what he says in the Bible, what his word says, what the truth is. I ended up moving to Texas by some friends. That depression and everything kind of had started to come back because I feel like I wasn't fully pursuing God like I thought I was. I thought I had given my life to him. I thought I had given up all of this stuff, but I was really still trying to control my own life and wasn't like open to really hearing the truth every time I heard the truth it like put me back 10 steps I felt like because it was just it felt like everything was a punch in the heart and I just felt like I don't know, I just wasn't ready for it, I guess. Um, so then I keep trying to like kind of pursue that. I eventually ended up buying, let me show you, my first ever Bible that wasn't like um, the King James Version because that's what I was told to read and that was the only version I was really supposed to read. And so I got this Bible and started reading different versions. This is the CSB version. And um, I actually got this book that is read through the Bible in a year map for women. So um, every day, like I'll show you, it kind of gives you three different scriptures. It's usually something in the Old Testament and then Psalms and something in the New Testament. So I restarted that and this is the first time I've ever like, just sat down and read, it, read through the Bible myself just trying to hear what God wanted to tell me and understand the real truth of the real gospel. And it started to absolutely changed my life. It felt like everything wrong just went away. Not like went away, but like I was content in the most undesirable situations. Like I was going through a divorce, which is extremely, extremely painful. And I was 
doing good. Like I was feeling content, I was feeling fulfilled. I was feeling more fulfilled than I'd ever felt in my entire life. And the more truth that I learned and the more that I learned about Jesus, it just like consumed me. And all I thought about was Jesus. I'd wake up and just be like, can't wait to do my reading today. All I wanted to do was tell everyone about Jesus and learn more and more about him that I could. Um, and then I finally found a church here to go to. And although all of that was happening, I felt like it was almost like two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. I would found myself getting somewhat depressed because of a situation that had happened, um, a development and just some drama in my life and it had really like pulled me back and I didn't trust in God, I didn't lean on God in that moment like I should have and so I wasn't questioning anything, like I still very much so wanted the truth, wanted God in my life and all that but I had put up a wall, just like a straight up wall between me and God and as bad as I wanted it, I like couldn't let myself break that wall down so I found a church and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go to a church here in Texas and I'm gonna try it out and see how I feel so I went to this church and you know I was going into it like God just tell me what you want me to hear I'm open I I, I just want to know the truth I, I want to feel you I want you in my life I sit down and it was like just if I was hoping not to cry, it wasn't gonna happen. Like, I was just overwhelmed from the get-go. Like, it wasn't even anything specific the pastor was talking about. He was actually just um, giving a sermon about baptism, and there was, like, some great songs. The worship band was amazing. I wouldn't say it was anything, like, crazy special. It wasn't even the words that the pastor was saying, but the feeling that I had, it wasn't, like, an emotional feeling like I had had before. It, this was, like, an overwhelming... It wasn't just... Like, I can't even explain it. Literally, all I could feel was God. That was it. It felt like warmth and comforting and peace, and like, I couldn't even describe it. And that whole time, I just kept hearing God, like, basically talking to me, like, this is for you. This is the truth. This is what's real. Like, lean on me. Trust me. So I get in the car, and I was just like, I was literally, like, silent. I was, like, shocked. Like, literally dumbfounded. I had nothing to say. I was overwhelmed and then I went home that night and over the course of the next few days I truly 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 gave myself to Jesus and I said I am done I give myself to you you can have my life I trade it for yours you are my Lord you are my Savior Jesus like my life is yours that was basically it like game over my life is yours from now on I'm gonna forever trust on you and lean on you when things get hard when things are easy no matter what's going on and I kid you not from that day until now and it's been like i don't know a month or two since that actually happened it was like the world is a different a completely different place um before this time like i would wake up every morning and everything was just gloomy and dark it didn't matter if it was a really nice day outside or not everything had like a haze to it like i was i was truly like depressed and like nothing i did ever made it better only jesus gets all my problems i can do this like there is no way that I could do this without Jesus. I literally, kid you not, I woke up and the world for the first time in so long was bright and it was sunny and I could see it. it like, I can't even explain, like it genuinely went from being hazy and dark to like extremely light. It was like my whole world had completely changed even just the way that I saw everything. And it was like I stopped thinking what can God do for me? I want God to solve my problems. And I said, I just want to worship God because he died for me on the cross already. He already paid the price. He already paid the debt. And I just want to give my life and worship. All I want to do is worship him and make him known. And it's like ever since then, it's been opportunity after opportunity, just like my way. And I'm not saying everything's been perfect. I've actually had some really, really, really tough things happen in my life since then. And it was like the worst news I could possibly hear. Like I keep hearing all the all these things, like rumors about me and situations that normally would tear me to shreds. And it's like, I am okay. And, I'm, and not to say that I just don't still have like bad emotions or bad feelings, I just give it to God. I trust in God and it's like, like I said, the world is clear. I'm content no matter, it's like, this is my life. It's ups and down and up and down and up and down and I'm just so content in all of it. It literally does not phase me. Not that it doesn't phase me, it's just like, I have God. And actually this morning I was doing some reading and it's about the story, um, well, let me just pull it up here. So it was about the disciples and Jesus, they were on a boat and the storm started coming and the disciples got all scared and they're like, oh no, like, what do we do? And they woke up Jesus and said, Master, Master, we're going to die. 
and he got up and rebu rebuked the wind and raging waves. So they ceased and there was a calm. He said to them, where is your faith? And like I read that and I was like, that literally applies to my life so much. And like this is the first time I've ever read the word of God and it felt like there was like everything actually has meaning. Everything has power and I can like relate to it. Even though these aren't stories about anyone in our age, these are ancient stories and yet I can somehow get something out of it and relate to it. I've never felt that before. So like I was reading that and I was just thinking like, just because I gave my life to God doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. In fact, it's still gonna be hard. It's gonna be very hard, but it's not that there won't be storms because I have Jesus. It's leaning on Jesus, asking for his help and knowing that there will be a calm to the storm because Jesus has saved me and Jesus will continue to be there for me and I can continue to trust in him. I've never been so passionate about something and felt so strongly that I just knew something was true. And there were so many times throughout this journey that I was like, am I doing the right thing? In fact, I remember reading this one part in Matthew and I was so like scared. I'd been getting into arguments with my dad about theology and how this was the wrong path and I need to come back to the Mormon church and all this stuff. And I came across this um, in Matthew 10 that said, anyone who finds his life will lose it. And anyone who loses his life because of me will find it. And then before that, it kind of just says, for I came to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and man's enemies will be the members of his household. And I was like, was this written for me? I think like, I think this was literally written for me. And there's been so many times throughout this journey that I've read something and I'm like, you cannot tell me this wasn't written for Sydney McGee in 2021. You know, the Bible has been around for so long and millions of people read something and get a completely different meaning out of it because it's it's a living word. It truly is God speaking to people through this. Um, some of the things that I really, really had to let go to continue on my journey with Jesus was growing up in a very religious household. It was like, you know, do the works the works will pay off, you know, and I feel like I was just taught a very wrong teaching about what exactly works were and how that relates to salvation or just God in general. Um, and then um, I came across this scripture in Galatians. I still don't know the order of the Bible, so it takes me forever to find stuff. Plus I'm dyslexic, so I just get, I can't memorize anything and everything gets confusing. I came across this scripture in Galatians 2, it's 20 through 21, and it says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. And that hit me so, so hard. There is so much deep meaning in just those two verses. And you know, when I read that, it was like my prayers had been answered. And I had been struggling a lot with like, you know, I have all this baggage and I have all these things wrong with me. and you know, I had people in my life convincing me that I had all these like mental issues and I, I needed to be on meds and there was something wrong with me and I, I didn't know what to think about myself and I was like, oh, I've been divorced, like I, I've done all these things, like how could anyone love me, how could anyone forgive me? And I read that and I was like, I know who can love me and I know who can forgive me and I know who already has and his name is Jesus and he is God and he's my Lord and Savior. and. I read that and it's like my my old self has died it died with Jesus on the cross and I've been reborn and every day is a new day to give up give up something else to God to let go of something and to let him renew my mind and my heart and you know as long as I have flesh I will be messing up and I'll be making mistakes but I know that I've already been forgiven and it's just crazy because like there's not a day that goes by that I don't just want to worship and I don't just want to dive into the word and have time alone with God like I really truly love that and need that God is so much bigger so much bigger than I ever could like have imagined could imagine can imagine it's unfeasible is that the right word? Unfathomable. The more that I dove into learning about God, I had thought about it all wrong. I had put him in a box and I had said, this is how humans are. You know, we're made in God's image, so this is how God is. And boy, was I wrong. And boy, did God give me some wake up calls on that one. You know, when you're truly asking God and searching for the truth, he will give the truth to you. But whether or not you believe it and take it in and let it actually mean something to you, you know, that's that's your own deal. I had been thinking of it all wrong and I realized that God was nothing like I thought he was. You know, I'd, I'd literally put him in this box of the world and realized that he is not in the world. He's the creator of it. He's the creator of the universe. There are no laws that apply to him. There are no rules that apply to him. He's God. And I'm like, all of that 
is just insane. And then you're telling me that God, that God, the one who is so big, wants a relationship with me and died for me and everyone. And like that just, I remember that hitting me so, so, so hard. So yeah, that's kind of my story. I went from someone who, you know, was very religious into someone who has a true passion and love for Jesus. It's crazy because you don't realize the impact that God can truly, truly have on your life and how he can really completely change you as a person from the inside out until you actually give your life to him and you actually commit to following what he says and aligning your will with his because let me tell you, if you actually do it, it changes your life. And there's a difference between a person who goes to church on Sunday and believes in Jesus and someone who truly knows Jesus, has a relationship with him and is always trying to learn more about him. That is now me and I was that person. I am not the same person. And that's, I guess, my story of my faith and how Jesus saved my life. I went from being a super depressed girl to someone who wants nothing more than to wake up every morning and I'm so thankful for every single day that I get to live. It's crazy because now when I think of the future or even the past, I have no anxieties and worries. Things that used to give me major social anxiety, things that used to get me down really, really hard, just don't anymore because I know that God has a plan for me bigger than I could ever, ever, ever imagine for myself. And as I align my will with his, life just gets better and better. I don't, even when life isn't good per se, it's better because my worst day with Jesus is far better than my best day without him. And I think I will leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my story. If you want to hear more about it or have questions or whatever, then I'm happy to make more videos about it. Have a very, very, very happy Merry Christmas. Why did I say that so weird? I don't know. Anyways, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.